So I'm going to be giving two talks to start. Um, the first, I'm going to focus, give a brief talk focusing on the data repository. And uh, then I'm going to be talking about the resource system in general. Um, and you know, by learning about the data repository, it'll make more sense what exactly we mean by the resource system. And uh, then I will hand things over to uh, Megan, who will talk specifically about neural nets. Um, so, so to start off, uh, what's the motivation for the data repository? So uh, there are lots of other data repositories or repositories online. If you search, you can find them easily. But a lot of them struggle struggle due to the same problems. They, uh, there's no standards across the, the data sets. Basically, if you have data to publish, um, you can you can add it to their site and they'll make a web page where people can download it. Um, but then there's no really easy way for anybody to know how to use it. Um, there's different file formats, different data structures. There's no examples that show you how to, how to use it uh, because the, the repositories weren't actually set up to actually be used with end user in mind. They were just sort of created so that the publishers of the data could say that they've published their data um, before they submit it to a journal. Um, but the data, Wolfram data repository uh, solves these problems uh, because we have the power of the Wolfram language and the Wolfram cloud behind us. Um, so all the data is in a consistent uh, framework the Wolfram Data Framework, and it's easy to access and use immediately from any Wolfram language environment. Um, so uh, what is the data repository? So this is sort of uh, breaking down the pieces of it. There's there's a website front end to it that you can uh, explore the data and, and immediately start using it. Um, there are Wolfram language functions to integrate, um, it, to integrate the data into the Wolfram language. There's uh, the back end of the data repository lives within our cloud. So uh, all of this is you know, using our own technology um, to, create, to create the data repository. So it's got hosted data and APIs. Uh, and then there's the content, of course, the most important part, uh, what's in there. Um, we have a great uh, group of people that are dedicated to finding data, um, you know, we, we, with the experience that we had from developing World from Alpha, we had a lot of, uh, you know, experience within our staff of uh, knowing how to get data and make it computable. So we took advantage of that and we have a great data set that's always expanding. Um, so the, in this talk, we're going to look at sort of an increasingly uh, sophisticated use cases for the data repository. First, we're just going to look at the website, sort of poke around at it, which might be the first thing that you want to do. Uh, second, we're going to access uh, resources from the Wolfram language and you know import the data and use it. Uh, the third thing we're going to do is we're going to create our own data resource. Um, and then the last thing we're going to do is see how you can submit data for publication. So uh, to start off, we can look at the, the website. So this is the homepage of the data repository website. Um, you can see uh, that the data we have broken down into two dimensions, categories, like what, you know, history and geography, and then the type. So, you know, you can have time series data about human activities, or you can have graph data about uh, social media. So these are sort of two different dimensions that, we're, that we sort data along. You can search uh, for, for keywords, um, or you can, you can learn more about how to use the data repository on any of these links, but let, let's just go ahead and find um, find an interesting data set. So here we have uh, governmental data. Um, some of this is from data.gov. Some of it is from um, other, you know, is state or local or international governments. Um, so we can just pick one of these. How about Atlanta Police Department crime data? Um, so when we go to one of these, you see a few features. You can see the title. Um, let me make this a little bit bigger for some of you. Uh, you can see the title, a uh, brief description, a brief summary of how big the data is. Uh, and one thing that's nice is you can immediately open 
this example notebook here in in our cloud. Um, I'm going to show how to use it in desktop instead, uh, but but it would be the same experience for those of you who are cloud users. And what's great about this is right immediately after we have this, we have examples on how to use it. Uh, you can click one of these things and go straight back into your notebook and just paste it in here and you'll get the same thing. Uh, you'll see, we'll see it's downloading to do, do, do. Sometimes these things can take a minute to display. Okay, there we go. So, so you're, you're right off and running with, with the data. You can, uh, if I say data equals this, this percent means I'm setting the last result to data. And, you know, you can do these things immediately. You can say, you know, uh, take largest by uh, beat. Looks like a numeric value. Let's see how that does. Just take the first 10 and say geolocation. So there we have those, and I can say geo list plot of that, and, and I'll get a map right away. So all of this is computable, and it's all, like I said, the Wolfram data framework, so it's all compatible with every language in the Wolfram language. Um, we can look at another example that I prepared beforehand, um, doing the same sort of thing, grab, grabbing a data set, picking a random sample from it uh, to display. There we go. Uh, so now, now we're going to find find the value in here that has the the look. The weather station has the largest rain total in January. Um, I can I can take the largest one and then just give me the coordinates of it. Um, if I want to do that for all the months, not just January, I can get the months this way and then map this, uh, take largest by this hash map is, is applying it to all those months. So I can do that. Now I have my coordinates. I can get, wrap them in this geo marker, which is, which is, uh, just a graphical tool for making these little markers. And just like that in a few lines, you know, all in this, this just one line of code that I've built up by sequentially doing different steps. This one line of code makes this nice, nice map showing us the weather station with the largest rainfall for each month of the year. Um, so uh, in addition to just grabbing the data, all of these, all the data lives within these resource objects. So uh, this resource object acts as sort of a pointer to the data, but it also contains metadata. So if you wanna see what the metadata fields are, you can look at properties. So all of these are all the metadata fields associated with this resource. You can see what categories in it are science and meteorology. Um, I can look at the source that uh, originally created the data, if it's from a publication. Um, and you can look at what the different, what the content of the element is. So in addition to the data that we already saw, which was a data set, there are other content elements within the resource. So we, we already looked at the data set Let's, we can also look at another element, which is the column description. So, um, so you know, in addition to the, the primary data, there's also these additional things that can come with uh, each resource. Uh, so you can search resources. We saw that there was a, a search field on the website. This is basically doing the same thing, but it will also include any resources that I've created myself. Um, so. We have a bunch of them that we've labeled as sample because they're sort of uh, just very so almost trivial data sets. Um, so if, if I pick a random random one of those, airplane glass, let's see what that's about, time to failure. So this is some sort of uh, statistical uh, data set for you know material science or civil engineering, I guess. Um, and you know you can get the get the data just like that. Um, so this is a small one because that's why that's why it's labeled as sample data. Um, so so that's sort of uh, how you just start using the published resources within the Wolfram language. Uh, the next step up in sophistication is if you want to create your own resources. Uh, so you can create your own resources two ways. Uh, you can do it programmatically like this. So you just use resource object and you type in this association. This association was 
uh, new in version 10 of the Wolfram language and it's key value map so you can define all of your properties and you can define what the content is. Um, so here I've created a resource object uh, with data uh, that, that then I can immediately start using it just like it was if it was from the public repository. Um, right, so Wolfram Alpha knows knows how old you are. This is this is our audience here. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the, the nicer way to make one of these things is using what we call the definition notebook. Um, so this is the definition notebook. And here, instead of filling this out in an association, you can uh, you can type in your name and your description, and you can tell it where if your con where your content is, or you can put the content in it. You can create examples. Um, I'm not going to take the time to fill one out here from scratch, but I've uh, filled one out beforehand, sort of like a cooking show, right? I got one already in the oven. Um, and so here here we have uh, a definition notebook that's been filled out. Let me make this a little bigger for you. Um, and what I did is I went to uh, this website which has uh, baseball statistics, and I just here we'll we'll look at it. I just copy I just copied this guy just like this, just grabbed it all like that and did a copy paste. And I had this uh, tab delimited data, and I'm using semantic import string, which which works on that. I tell it what each column of data is supposed to be. Um, and it, it gives me this nice uh, data set that I can use. Uh, I can define the data. I just go through here, evaluate, evaluating the cells that have the little wolves next to them. Um, I've created examples in, that I want to be in my example notebook. And then here, this dollar dollar resource object line turns all the content of this notebook into a resource object. So here I have my resource object, and I can use it just like I used it here, if all I care about is sort of having something to use locally. Um, I can cache it so that it'll be available uh, next time. Uh, I, you know, if I quit, if I quit the Wolf from language, it'll be available again later. Um, or what's fun is I can uh, deploy this to my my cloud account. So here I, I've done this, and now I have this nice, uh, web page showing showing the name and the description just like in the public repository and it has these examples so you can take this since i made said this one was public uh, i could take this one and send it to uh, you know my colleagues or i can post it on my blog or whatever i want and anybody can use my resource object um, themselves in wolfram cloud or mathematica or anything else uh, and then the last thing i can do is um, submit this to be included in the public repository. Um, and that we're going to talk about more in the in the next talk about how you can do submissions um, as far as publisher accounts because it requires a publisher account. And we'll talk about that in the in the next talk. Um, but as far as what we want in the data repository, if you're interested in getting your data published in our data repository, uh, we definitely like things from you know, academic publications, you know, or anything that's really well vetted, generally interesting data. Um, in addition to those sort of like really nice data sets that have that have been uh, that are from established sources, we're also looking for sample data like the the one I showed you with the the glass uh, tensile test or whatever it was. Um, and so so if you have a sample data that we don't already have represented within our data repository. We're interested in that as well, um, and you need to make sure they have to uh, attribute it to the originator. If it's you, that's great. If it's not you, that's fine. You just need to make sure that you tell us who originally came up with it and show us that you have the rights to it, and you need to have a nicely written description of what it is and why people are interested in it. Uh, the data should be in the Wolfram Data Framework, like I've, I've mentioned a couple times now. So it should have things like quantities and entities and data objects and geopositions. Uh, and how to take data from, you know, your your uh, colleagues' Excel spreadsheet or um, some some other source uh, and get it into WDF uh, is sort of beyond the scope of this talk. But uh, Aaron Enright, a Wolfram employee, has done great uh, great demonstrations of how to do that, walking through real examples and turning them into computable data. 
Um, and he, he live broadcasts those on Twitch and the Twitch videos are available. Uh, these links or you can use these QR codes right now if you wanna if you wanna get your smartphone out real quick. I'll give you a couple seconds. But don't don't start watching that and stop watching me. That would be a mistake. Um, so that that uh, is sort of the the summary of of data repository, um, which is the first repository in our resource system. And so the next talk I'm going to move on to in a minute is about the resource system in general and all the other repositories that we have. Um, but before we move on, I can go ahead and uh, take any questions that you might have about the data repository. 